I hope we're not filming this. <laughs> so there we go. Wow, look at that. This is a very nice layout. Pretty sparkly. Anyway, you'll probably never use that. Yeah, I like this. If we ever have warmth. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. I think I see the pants. Aha! Randy! <laughs> Come on around, buddy. There you, we are. You, you won't believe where we are today. Here we are in Salem. Um, it's, a, it's a really neat little town and it's kind of like a mini Newport. There's a lot of pretty shops, a lot of development going on downtown and not too far from Boston. This is kind of fun. This is another one of those progeny cases that we talked about recently with the uh, Owens Cutter. We're going to be looking today at a Pacific Seacraft uh, Regatta 333. This is a spin-off of an Ericsson uh, 32 footer. Now the Ericsson Company was started in 1964 by two brothers, Don and Gene Coleman. They had a little Ericsson 27 that was very successful. Eventually, they came up with a 46, which is really a sleek looking boat. I guess everything closed in on them and they, they shut their doors around 1990. And Pacific Seacraft came in and bought up some of the molds for the Ericsson 34. Three and the Ericsson 35 and so on, and started producing the boats. The one thing about Pacific Seacraft is they, they're a very high-end builder. And in fact, the one we're gonna look at is hull number one. And the fun thing about this, I kinda like looking at hulls number one, because you know when somebody decides they're gonna build a boat or build something new, and they're gonna take it, this boat's probably been around to boat shows back then. They want the best, so they're gonna build it as strong and everything's gonna be right from the start. So what do you say, should we go take a look yeah, at it? Yeah, which one is it? Uh, it's, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'll try to keep the pace up here for you. All right. uh, ah, I spotted her, over on the port bow. One point off the port bow. There she is, whoa, whoa. Look at the beauty of this, can you see all this boat? Of course you can't. <laughs> no, it's tight quarters. <laughs> tight quarters. This is a, uh, a Bruce King design, he, I, somebody asked me, actually I think it was you Randy, asked me about the keels, because this looks like a small keel. There's a lot of lead in that keel, there's a lot of lead in that pencil, as they say. I think the, uh, I think there's about four or five thousand pounds in that, that piece of lead. And, uh, it's a fin, and this is a, a foil shape to it that, uh, King decided it was going to be the most efficient to help the boat lift and ride to weather. I don't think there's one boat down here that has the same keel. They're all different. Every designer's decided they've got a better idea. I know you like to look at through-haul fittings. It's really an important thing for any owner to know. Like number one, as soon as he steps on the boat, find the through-haul fittings, check on them, make certain they're solid, and then look inside the boat so you know where to find them. Now, Be that's because it's your point of vulnerability when you're out in the water. And it is, because if these fall out or break or something happens to it, water starts coming in and you never realize it because it tends to do it at night. And that's when the off watch goes below and they step into ankle deep water. Yep. And there's a level of panic and it's very dark and the boat's going like this, up back and forth, and you're thinking, uh-oh. You want to be able to get to those little puppies as best you can. Yep. No apprehension about the size of the keel, because it seems um, so no, much No, 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 because I actually have uh, uh, with me today, and I, I, would, I will read a, a, a letter from another owner of these boats, who's had this boat off in 25 knots of wind, single-handing in four to six foot seas, and he said the boat tracks like an arrow. Bruce King has not done a bad boat. Oh, she's pretty flat down here. This does not have a wine glass. This is basically uh, another extension of the, the old canoe bottom a little bit, pretty flat in here. And uh, a nice smooth, unadulterated run coming back with a little bit of a bustle. This area is a little bit of a bustle right in here to help extend the, the uh, sailing waterline length. And he's added a little kind of a kicker thing up here so that that gives a nice smooth exit for the water coming off the water lines. But even if you just look down there, it's, it's a pretty, pretty uh, awesome looking blade on that, that keel. And here we have a nice feathering uh, prop here. This is, you know, how smooth is that gonna be going through the water? Yep. It's like a bullet. And this gizmo is a little different version than we've seen so far It's a line cutter. And don't ever get your fingers near it, even on land, it's very <laughs> sharp. His zincs are in good shape. The strut looks good. There's areas of black spots on the boat, uh, which is just, uh, I think, 
This has been a cru used for cruising only pretty much for this owner. Uh, she's had a, a coat or two of bottom paint uh, over maybe the original bottom paint and that this is probably due for a soda blast sometime yep. to remove the old bottom paint. But again, you could take this boat and, and, and go sailing with it just the way it is. One thing we've noticed too, there's a lot of concentration of through hull fittings in sort of one place. So I think they're gonna be easy to find on board. And I don't think that's uh, by chance. I think that's a design concept. Uh, Seems like a smart one to kind of clump them all together so you have them all to deal with. If you can, and they, they may be, have different lines uh, evacuating into the same uh, through hull fitting yep. to save additional work. Uh, top sides look, look just fine. This is ready for a, uh, a wax this fall, this spring. Would you freshen that up too if you did the bottom at the same time? I'd, I'd wax it. <laughs> this is called Skith Blathner. And that took me about, uh, oh, about half an hour to finally uh, master that. I think I mastered it. I hope the owner doesn't mind my version. But the Skith Blathner is a, uh, I think an old Viking vessel of sorts. This is really clever to cut down on miscellaneous disturbance in the hull. Bruce has always designed boats for speed to race and so on. All these little holes and little things like the propeller always amaze people when you tell them, well, that's gonna slow you down. Locate them like so, and you help eliminate some of that problem. Spade rudder here, uh, slightly counterbalanced up here on the forward end. I think, uh, I think we've looked at her bottom long enough. What do you think? I think it's about that time. I think so, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a climb there. You were quick, like a little, like a spider monkey. I shot up there. Well, look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm practically naked here today. It's, uh, what is it, 45, 50 degrees out? Yeah. There's no, not, not a, a little drop of a breeze. Nice double spreader rig, actually, while you're looking up there. You see? Yep. Uh, looks to be a nice condition. A little bit of wear on it. I'm sitting here looking at a nice array of Ray Marine electronics, GPS, and a radar. There's a radar on this boat. It has all the electronics you want, uh, depth sounder, apparent wind, wind speed, and everything. They're all right here. And a very nice uh, uh, Ritchie compass. There's a wheel locked down here. This will lock this wheel in place uh, to keep it from turning around. When do you want to use that? Uh, sometime if you're just, if you're motoring or something, you don't turn the autopilot, uh, you can set that and take the pressure off it. Or if you're in a mooring on an anchor and the boat's getting a little bit of motion, instead of having this wheel, uh, have the rudder, you know, knocked about with the wave motion, you can just tighten this right down and it's just a little break on the shaft in there and it won't go anywhere to speak of. Uh, but you can also use it as a kind of a tentative, uh, uh, autopilot so if somebody else is stepping to steer while you're not. There's a gentleman out in Los Angeles who took uh, the forebear of this and Ericsson 32, uh, fixed it all up, climbed it himself and sailed all the way to Hawaii by himself and videotaped the whole thing. It's a great show. Watch it because that could be this boat was a little more luxurious than that, but um, he was totally comfortable. He had a great time. Is it a blue water boat? I'd say yes. The engine panel is right underneath the lip of this seat, so it's kind of protected there. That's very visible. You can see the RPM right from the helm here. I'm sitting on, and again, another one of those raised uh, center sections uh, for the helmsman. We have our propane tank right here. There you go. There's the answer for it. So that's propane storage. Um, I'd probably like to see a, a gasket on this. So I'm gonna stick my head in here. We were correct on the through hauls back on the stern, the top through haul button. What we're seeing there is exactly what we thought. There's an exhaust, there's two cockpit drains, and there's also the upper button, which is the vent for the propane tank. A nice little touch for the family swimmers and so forth. It's got a uh, fold down ladder. So these will drop down out of your way, and then you'll have a, uh, a ladder that will fold right down to the transom. And if you look down there, there's a little swim platform. Just a little notch in the, in the transom gives you, I hope we're not filming this. <laughs> and here's our radar uh, post, and it's pretty sturdy there. It's got an, at two anchors here and one here. This is sort of unusual, clever. Um, that's the opening, the little cap for the diesel fuel fill. 
And if you notice, it had little edges on it. Yep. That takes the same winch handle that opens, that runs your winches. So one handle does a whole lot of things. Remember other boats, we've seen different handles all over the place. Yeah, specialty so, tools. So that's, that's a pretty clever design. Good sized cockpit, first of all. Nice sized cockpit with a uh, nice bridge deck. And this is all good for lounging in here. There is a nice big hatch, big opening. What they've done here is they've, they've created a really large opening to put your stuff in. The one problem you've got to watch for this is that when you have this design, you don't have this so low that in the case of flooding the cockpit, water is going to run down into the boat. So this is up and protected, very safe. Your gear is going to stay dry. And this, this piece is not lightweight. One is thing that a worry? What's that? Is that, a, you know, if somebody opens it up, then it quickly slams down and... Well, yeah, kind of a little spring uh, holder would be nice. Yeah. Uh, that's an that's amazingly heavy piece of, of fiberglass work there. So, uh, staunch, sturdy. More and more boats are running uh, lines back from the uh, mast so that you can, if you're single-handing or short-handing, you can control everything from the cockpit. He's done a nice job with color coding his lines on here so you know which is which. How about this bright work here? A little project for you? Well, that's what makes the boat fun. That means you can get on the boat and, and you're not going to say to yourself, what can I do today? Yep. And you're going to say, I, can, I could brighten up that hatch. And there's not much teak on the boat. There's a, some handrails and uh, the hatchway there, but, and a little piece across the transom, and maybe the cockpit dining table. But it's, there's so little that it would take very little to brush it down and brighten it right up. It'd, be, it'd look great. She's got a big Dodger. We've seen pictures of the Dodger up on the boat. It's a very nice Dodger. Here is what we call, used to be called mid-boom sheeting for the main sheet. Now, this is so far forward, I'm surprised that it functions uh, well. I believe this has been functioning for, since 1997. I've never quite seen it this far forward. With this sort of rig, they've got two sets of shrouds outboard here uh, that go, uh, one goes what, about three quarters, two thirds of the way up the spar, and the other one goes all the way to the mast head. And the reason that's done is that way you can adjust the two areas of the spar separately down here at the deck. Uh, and then of course we have a nice set of forward uh, and, and aft lowers to steady that spar down. This is a Harkin roller furling system up here, which is one of the best. So there we go. Wow, look at that. Uh, got some anchor or dock lines stowed in here on top of the anchor line. That's fine. That is a brood of an anchor. Maybe a fortress. A fortress or a bruce. It's not a Danforth. I'm walking outside the shrouds. So sometimes these are in your way. Sometimes you've got to go inside them. Sometimes you can't even get by them. But this is nice. You can go by it and you also have a handhold. I want to go below. All right, let's, let's do it. Let's go below. What do you say? Yeah, let's do okay. it. Randy, come on down. All right. This is a very nice layout. 32 feet now. The amount of room in here is gigantic. I mean, it's just enormous. A little beam goes a long way, doesn't it? It really does. This feels, <laughs> compared to like some of the older 40 footers, this feels even better. I know, I know, exactly. Four people is a nice number on a boat this size. Uh, any more than that, you gotta bring a lot more food. Here's a fold up table. I can drop that right down. So you've got an easy passageway fore and aft. The other side does not drop down. It's fixed in a fixed position. So that's always there for you for a place to spread out more charts or anything else you want to do. Um, boats are loaded with uh, storage and all sorts of little areas here. They've got hand grips, different places, nice hand grips overhead. And as you look up there, we see the zippers again. We've seen those zippers before. Why do we have zippers up there? So you can get at the fasteners on the um, winches. Exactly. So you can move the winches or tighten them or add additional equipment without taking down the whole overhead. It's always nice to have a little navigation station. Now, 32 footer, you don't need a huge sit down situation, but there is a big table uh, with a fixed portion to it that if you wanted to lay out a big chart, I'd be happy to sit down there and, and plot a course. Uh, this for quick reference for you right here. Plus, you have uh, your voltage meters your bilge pump switches, propane gas control, uh, VHF radio, and all the circuit breakers for your running lights and the boat lights, plus water pressure, um, battery charger, and so forth. They're all right here. 
uh, for you. So this is a little nav station, and like all nav stations, you have to have special place to put everything <laughs> that you can't find anything anywhere else to put. Miscellaneous. Right here, you'll see uh. we have. Um, Very clever. Refrigeration, and quite deep down there, so you could put a couple blocks of ice in there, probably 100, 100 pounds of ice in, plus your refrigeration. We have a pretty grown-up galley here. Uh, this is an old fooling galley. What do we see here we like? The dual. Dual, and close to the center line of the boat, so they're less likely to fill with water and, and, and siphon water in from the outside, or spill water out of them into the boat when the boat heels over. This is a nice little storage area up here for mugs and uh, plates that fit right into those little, little, little thumb fiddles there. And uh, you figure out what fits in there works for you. Um, and uh, right here we have a good place for food storage. Uh, there's always, you know, uh, a good place to put um, your food if you need to have food on the boat. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, so there's um, there's no food in there right now. <laughs> hmm. Maybe okay. there should be. Uh, somebody should put some food in there sometime. And here we've got a nice two-burner uh, propane stove. Big burner, small burner, and uh, there's an oven uh, factor to it as well right there. And it's all pretty clean and nice to see. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, uh, wow. But uh, pretty barely, sparkly. Barely huh? used. Pretty sparkly. Oh, my God. <laughs> there is a... Another whole room back here. What? Yep. 32 feet. We got another room behind the cook. This is nice too. See, just a small point. See these little latches that Pacific has put down? The owner didn't put these on. The Pacific Sea Craft has. You know, the worst thing you want to have happen is to be at sea and get hit by a really big wave, right? And any boat, even ocean liners, will roll over. So when the boat rolls over, you want to make certain that everything in the boat is going to stay right where it is. Even if you turn the boat upside down and shake it, you want everything to stay there because the boat's going to come back 99% of the time and you're going to want it pops up. You don't want rotten eggs and magazines and tools all scattered all over the floor in a giant stew. A nice hanging locker right here inside. It's almost cedar lined, I think. There's a little cedar over here on one side. But we have back here a pretty large uh, um, queen berth. I'd call that a queen almost. Uh, not too pointy at the other end. I wonder uh, how that measures out. How did that work out? It looked pretty good. The head, oh. head clearance looked good too. Wow, yeah. I got lots of room here, don't I? And look at the windows in here. You're not going to be claustrophobic in here because this is really well vented. See, there's three opening ports all the way around here. And the ceiling is quite high behind. You got a nice shelf to put your books and other reading material up here. And I wouldn't hesitate to sit like this, put a couple of cushions behind you. And you can be very comfortable, you know, almost sleeping sideways here if you wanted to. Uh, so, again, we're in a 32-foot boat. And I, you didn't mention the fact that we just had one locker on in the cockpit, did you? Uh, no, I didn't. Yeah, well. because you know what happens when we see one locker in the cockpit? What do we know? It's going to have a quarter berth. we got a quarter berth. This is like a three-quarter berth. It's pretty Wouldn't great. Yeah. I'm impressed with the headroom that you didn't uh, whack your I head know. On. This, is, this is pretty sweet. So, um, you can be very comfortable here on a nice summer evening on a, on a, um, a swing on your anchor up in uh, coastal Maine. Or a spring day. Uh, or a spring day. Nighty night. Uh, are you leaving me? Yep. Oh, gee whiz. Golly gee. Hold on. <laughs> it's quite a little room back here for a 32-footer uh, to have all the space. Plus, when I stand up, notice what happens with uh, the Captain Q measuring stick. Yeah, no no concussion. And, uh, no concussion. It's pretty nice. So I come out of here, into the galley, nav station over here. Oh, we got another door here. Uh -oh. You didn't notice this door, did you? No, I don't notice well, a lot. Let me show you what's in here. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Look at that. It's the size of, I don't know, almost every other boat we've seen The big, that's so much bigger. Nice sink, shower in there. See the, the removal shower head on the, on the, uh, faucet there and one thing else I like what do you see that I like in here that's nice hopper being uh, fore and aft yeah you got it that's it nice going <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because that way there's a good chance you won't get thrown out of the front door unless you bump into a big whale but um, no this is this is quite something I'm gonna give you just get a, a sense of, uh, of uh, size in here uh, 
captain is now on the throne. I could shower if I wanted to now and uh, just let it drain right out. And I've got more of these storage lockers down here. Oh, look what I found here. Look at this. A couple of through hole. Through hole fittings. Right. Uh, sink through hole. Uh, water intake for the engine, I think. Uh, and yeah. the last one is a water intake for the head. You know what? And Nicely what labeled, too. I mean, we haven't seen that a lot. Yep. No. Uh, Pacific Seacraft really does a nice job with the details of things. That's, that's a nice deep sink, hot and cold running water, uh, storage for your toothbrushes, and 110 volts here. Yeah, I like this. This is a, uh, oh, by the way, this is an electric head. Oh, little push button. No handles. Oh, yeah. And we have a little button right here. So that makes it very nice. This is a very friendly, family friendly, uh, young couple friendly boat. This Yanmar 27 horsepower diesel engine. Looks pretty sparkly. It's very sparkly. Very sparkly. Definitely very sparkly. Very sparkly. And uh, everything's in good shape. I mean, just things like your 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 uh, belt tension here. About a half about a half an inch depression is appropriate. That's fine. These hoses are all hard. They're not soft and wiggly or broken. Uh, I'd like to see maybe another hose clamp on that. All the lines, here's the fuel filter coming in right here handy for you. And a secondary a fuel pump there. Down below that is the seawater strainer with the green top. Just about everything is accessible as can be. Any problems with the engine, you can open it right up. Yeah, really accessible. It, it couldn't be more accessible unless you put it on the galley table. So we love the engine room. The engine room is major points right there. This is part of your mast. This is the bottom part of your mast. And it goes through the deck. It's not stepped on deck. It goes through the deck. And this piece right here, we may have seen this before. This is anchored to the deck and to the mast. Now think of the, the mast as being an arrow in a quiver, in a, in a bow rather. And the mast is, is being pulled down. It's trying to shoot up and, and meanwhile try to pull the sides of the boat in. This pulls the deck down. This keeps the deck tied into the boat so the boat will not do this. Uh, or the, excuse me, the, the cabin top will not do this when you tighten up the, the shrouds on the outside. So that's an important piece. It's kind of fun to see it sitting there. So Randy, the headroom starts to drop off pretty quickly up here. Uh, it, but if you're just coming up to sleep, you're going to come up here and lie down. You'll find it won't be a big problem. My head is out the hatch right now. Yeah, so. this seems a little more snug. I guess this is where the price you pay for having everything else big, right? Yeah. Something has to give. Even though it's a chubby 32-footer, there's still got to be something fore and aft. Are there any handholds for you to jump up and in onto that bunk? No, no. I think you can pop up pretty easily. Uh, even I could myself, actually. Just notice a little trim around this hatch which is subject to sunlight and rain dribbling in because, you know, somebody's always going to leave this open sometime. Yep. This needs a little attention. A little love. Very yep. little love. That'll get maybe pushed back in place or glued back in place, but this is not earth shattering. Yeah, a little one day project. If this is the only problem we've discovered <laughs> on this boat, this is a pretty good deal. <laughs> we like this. <laughs> A really cool little 32-foot boat. We haven't had a boat this size between the 40-footers we've done and, and the little short 27, 28-footers. This boat started out really as an Ericsson 32. That was the thought of it. Some fellows already sailed his 32-footer to Hawaii and back by himself. They've jammed a lot into the boat, and yet the boat will still sail like the wind. Uh, she has a pretty modern, adjustable, tunable, two-spreader mast. Uh, internal halyards, all the lines left to the cockpit. It's quite spectacular. So I'm going to give it some rating now. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ten. She's a floater. Uh, and by the way, we do have a boat coming up someday that people wonder is not going to float. And we'll tell you about <laughs> that. Something to look forward to. Anyway, this is a floater. And again, given its size, given what they've designed into it, it's not trying to be a 40-footer. It just sort of works out that way that you have the same amenities. 16.75. Wow. 16.75. That's, that's Pretty, higher than I thought you would. A remarkable boat. And if I were younger and I wanted a you know, boat that would be reasonably priced, that could take me just about anywhere, um, 
this would be a good choice, a uh, neat boat. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. So we're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>